Happy Monday here on this episode of Miked Up on Pittsburgh Sports Live and Pittsburgh Sports Now and all throughout the Now family of networks. I'm Mike Oste. That's Mike Fakovican. And good morning to you as we now start off this new week and a new week that continues the Pittsburgh Penguins in the postseason as they are now tied as we're speaking in their first round series with the New York Islanders. Another game this evening, game five this evening, to try to decide that series one way or another. They will not be tied after this night and when we speak to you on our next show. Again, Mike Up is presented by Martin Lawn Services. That's at 412-849-5894 to call Doug Martin for all your lawn care needs. And we're going to talk some Penguins hockey. That's obviously going to be the focal point. Some Steeler news, Pitt news, the rest of the Now Network can break at any time. We'll get to it the rest of the week if it does. But to get started this week, we're going to open things up with the Penguins losing their last game to tie this series, and then what will happen in game five. And then also, it's, uh, you know, the morning after a major championship in the golf world. We're both golfers. I'm a golfer. I'm a big golf fan. And Phil Nicholson kind of shocking the world at 50 years old winning a major championship, joining an elite company in terms of players at that age to even compete and have a lead going into Sunday in major championships. That's not happened in a long time. And one of only a few to do it after 44 plus years old, he's 50 and wins his fifth major. This is the PGA championship. So we'll get to that a little bit as well. Pittsburgh connection or not, that's major news we're going to touch on. So Mike, to get us started, the Penguins lose game four. They're now tied in this series Last time we spoke, it seemed like they were back to form. They were riding high. They were getting secondary scoring. Jeff Carter looked like he he looked when he was winning cups with the Los Angeles Kings. Tristan Jari kind of silenced some critics. He played well. Then you go to game four. Now, I for me, Jari still played okay, but defensively they were bad. The goals were allowed, so it doesn't look good for him. And there were issues. And they also mentally collapsed where they fed right in the Islanders' crap. The Islanders were able to, to guide that to a victory. They were able to win pretty handily. The series is now tied, and game five coming up tonight at 7 o'clock. I guess to get us started, and we have a lot of ways we can go in terms of who's to blame, what needs to be better, we'll get to all of that. But just to get us started, why is this team so inconsistent? They started off the year sluggish. They then picked it up. They won a division. But now we're seeing game to game, it looks like two different teams. This is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for a team that is a division champion with tons of experience and a lot of elite talent. They just can't put it together back-to-back games for some reason. That was the most uh, disappointing aspect of the game the other day to me. It reminded me of last year's series in that yeah. There, there didn't seem to be any sort of urgency. It was almost as if the Penguins went into that game and th- played throughout the game with the attitude of, okay, we're up two to one, regardless if we lose, the series will still be tied. Right. I, 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 it reminded me totally of last year, in, and that was in all four games. They, they just didn't seem to <laughs> have any sort of, I hate, I hate hockey for it, trust me. When I tell you I hate these cliches that come from hockey players, uh, desperation and <laughs> just just yeah. all the same stuff. Uh, our compete level and hockey is cliche. How, filled, yeah. yeah. Oh God, that drives me crazy. <laughs> but uh, I but I do have to admit though that all of those apply here. I just I saw it, it seemed as though it was a regular season game in November. Yeah, uh, for the Penguins and and the Islanders had it uh, for the whole game. Uh, the other thing that I think is becoming a problem, and if you listen to the Penguins uh, uh, media on Twitter, uh, it, it's almost as if the players are in uh, <laughs> listening to the uh, what's being written here on Twitter is the amount of whining and crying about the officials. I am just so tired of hearing yeah. uh, after the game – Malkin talking about oh, this ref always has it out for me. And <laughs> um, it, it, it's just the, the refs have been bad both ways. Have they been good? No. Have they been uh, terribly bad for the Penguins? I, I don't think so. I think they've been bad, uh, maybe a little bit more toward the Penguins, but th- th- that, that shouldn't be a factor in uh, their compl- It's almost as if they have it in their head. They're the, the Islanders are out physically in the Penguins. I don't know if they're looking for penalties. 
but uh, th this this crying of the media and the fan base and now the Penguin players. I haven't heard Mike Sullivan uh, uh, jump into that yet, but th this whining about how this officiating has gone in the playoffs has to end or they're going to be out of this very quick. It's an excuse, and I hate excuses. And even if even if the refs are missing calls, 99.9% .9 of the time they're missing calls for both teams. Yeah, yes, exactly. throughout sports history, we can point to examples where a referee did screw a team out of a championship or out of a big game. There, there's even been an example where, where an umpire screwed a player out of a perfect game. Those things will occur. But the Penguins also don't have this excuse, and the reason why I hate this excuse for the Penguins the referees have been bad all season. They have been bad for both teams all season. And the Penguins are the more talented team here. Let's face it. They're a division champion. They've been playing well at the end of the season. Let's get back to that. And I know Malkin missed a lot of time, and he's getting his footing back under him. But even if you take him out of the equation, Crosby, Gensel, Latang, even Tristan Jari has more experience than what you're seeing in the Islanders' net as they've not been able to go to their normal guy due to injuries. So, yes, the Islanders are a good team. But they're a team that wins by trying to get in your head, play physical, do enough offensively, and then just kind of trap you to death and play that boring style, and then they hold a lead. And what annoyed me the most out of the game is Chris Letang, who's played very well most of this year, kind of got back to his normal self, got away from the critics, got back to the guy that helped them years and years ago that's a borderline Hall of Famer. He just fed right into the mental war games of the mm -hmm. Islanders in that game. So did Malkin as well. He's a veteran. He's been there before. Now he's a little bit more of a head case that teams can pull him into that a lot easier than other players. But Latang's not normally a head case. He normally can be mentally sound. And he got fed right into that. Gensel too, Ross, Zook, all of those guys. They weren't what they were in game three mentally and they weren't playing as well in particular. But, no, if they would lose this series, I don't want to hear the referees had it out for them or they screwed them. Think of it this way, and it's the same thing I always say when people say the referees are trying to screw the Steelers. The NHL, they want Crosby to advance. Right. So they're, they're not trying to make it right. harder. If they can pick which team to move on here, I know the Islanders are in New York. They're going to throw the Penguins a bone. So – it's not, you know, you, you look at any other fan base's Twitter feed, you're seeing fans always saying Crosby's always getting the calls. So it's not like they're trying to screw the Penguins. But, yeah, I don't like the calls. I will say it's just odd that a veteran team, and, yes, there are young players, but a team led by veterans would just feed right into this Islander war games. I mean, we saw it in game three even when the Penguins were leading. They tried to, to make it physical. They tried to just kind of scrap at the end and make it ridiculous. And they carry that over again in game four. Now, I will say, too, we know this from the Stanley Cup playoffs, Mike, because the Stanley Cup playoffs are that animal that it's a true gauntlet. It's, it's just a gauntlet ride more than any other postseason in sports. And we've seen this with the Penguins over the years. One game you can be on your game. The next game you can be totally off of it. And the next game you can be back in stride again. So the Penguins in game five tonight could easily pick it up. Crosby could have a couple goals. Jari could make saves. They could be fine. They are the more talented team, and I do feel the better team. I, but you never know. You don't, you don't want to be that comfortable because this is how teams lose playoff series when you say to yourself, and they did give that vibe, we're up two to one. Worst case scenario, we're tied. We're going to go home. We're better. You know, if we go seven, we'll be at home. So we'll win it there on the last change. And that's history usually tells you that. But that doesn't help you for a deep playoff run. Because you don't want to drag a series into seven games if you don't have to in the first round when you have so many more games to go. So they could win game five. I think they will win game five. Nothing is guaranteed. I will defend Tristan Jari here for a second, and I do want to get your thoughts on his play. I thought he wasn't good in games one or two, or at least wasn't good enough. He was good in game three, maybe okay in game one. Game four, though, I thought the defense was worse than him. They just were, were doing nothing in front of the net. I don't know what he could have done there. I don't think... Patrick Waugh or Dominic Hasek would have been able to, to do much better with that defense. The Penguins defense just, just flat out sucked in front of him in that game four for me. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I think it, it also, the, the Islanders are more, and this is something that uh, I think regardless of what, ha what happens this series, uh, you're going to see uh, Brian Burke does not like his, uh, Brian Burke team yeah. does not get out physical. Uh, right. And 
I think they're going to change the, that for the future. Yes, for sure. uh, there, it needs to be better in front of their own net. And the other thing that's been a little disappointing is um, the how the Islanders are being physical with Brian Rust and Getzel. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why they've been invisible. They can't be around the net. They're shoving them to the outside. Uh, there's nothing in front of the net, and uh, yeah, the, the the Islanders are just being the more aggressive physical team and aside from a you know a few a few penguins probably the penguins fourth line the penguins are shying away and i think that's something that has to change and if it doesn't waiting for the call it seems like they're shying away and saying go call the penalty yeah it's not going to always happen in the playoffs they are going to have a looser whistle yeah Yeah. i think that's something that will get addressed um this off season with Burke because as long as he's I would imagine as long as he's with the Penguins organization um the, that that's a that's a uh, a calling card of any team that he's around there they might not win every game uh but they're not going to get their butts kicked around and that's uh sort of what's happening right now with the Penguins yeah, mic up here, Mike Fakovic and Mike Osti. mic up presented by Martin Lawn Services. You see the number there behind Mike V's head. Now, Mike, what I think is the elephant in the room that not enough people are focusing on, and we talked about this actually before the show, and I think this really needs to be brought up here on the airwaves, and other people need to bring it up on their airwaves as well. While you need secondary scoring to win, you absolutely do. You cannot lean on your stars. They can't carry you all the way through. You need depth. You need good enough goaltending. You need defense. You need to be mentally sound. All true. They need to be better at all of those. They've not been good enough over the years. But the reason why they've won three cups in this era, the reason why they're always a contender no matter who's the coach, no matter what's going on in the league, is because they have the best player in the world in Sidney Crosby, a top five player all time for me. You have Evgeny Malkin, who's a Hall of Famer, who's Scottie Pippen of this era to Crosby, Michael Jordan, a Hall of Famer as well. Chris Letang, a borderline Hall of Fame guy who's been a Norris candidate, who's been one of the better offensive defensemen over the years. They have other great players, Jake Ensel, who's younger, but he's been Mr. Playoffs. You start the playoffs, he's been money the last few years and the last few series, not as much as when his career originally got started, where he was that great player to jumpstart those back-to-back cup teams. And I think eventually, and they wouldn't be in this moment without these people, but eventually you got to start pointing the finger at Crosby, Malkin in particular, and several others. Now, I know Malkin's not fully healthy and hasn't been so over the years, but, you know, and you can go to Will Graves' tweet there, a colleague of ours, friend of mine, Will Graves, who threw this out there on Twitter, and this is just eye-popping. You look at the last 14 games, they're 3-11. and 11. We know the series losses they've endured, including a, swept, a sweep to the Islanders a couple years ago. But Crosby, four goals, two assists. Gensel, a couple goals. Malkin, only one goal. And that does include missing some games. I don't have the exact amount of games he's missed, but even he's played most of them, and he only has one. And not enough from the big stars. When you have big stars like that, they got to carry you through at least one game of a series. They got to play better in the series if you lose. And yes, they wouldn't be in this spot without those guys. And nobody wants to criticize Crosby. I'm not saying he's not an all-timer. But if they would lose this series or they would lose even in the second round and he only has one or two goals, only one goal in this series, eventually the buck has to stop at the major stars because if they win, they're going to get the credit. It's going to go on their resume in the Hall of Fame. They're going to bolster their legacy. So if they lose, it has to go on them some too. You cannot rely on the secondary scoring to carry you. You need more from those stars when you go into most of these series with more stars and the best player on the ice and Sidney Crosby. Crosby needs to do more. It's a... It's a fascinating topic. No one wants that, to say it, though. No, no, of course not. Um, I'm, I'm going to watch what I say here because I, I, I threw out a tweet probably five, six years ago. I, it still gets retweeted. Uh, <laughs> I, won't even, I won't even bring it up. Okay, I'll have to see that one. I don't know if I don't know. If, I don't know if I knew you then. So I will okay. say I will say that I was under the. I, have, I said this two years ago, and I still believe it. Um, and I and I still think it's true, and I don't care what they do. But uh, I thought the Penguins should have traded Malkin a couple of years ago. That was I, I just thought that conversation. I, I just thought that it was that time. And the bottom line is the regular season. We've said this numerous times on this show. The regular season's one thing. It's nice to put up stats when you only play a team one time, and then you're on to another team the next game. 
but the money the money comes in the playoffs when a coach gets to uh, go up against you come yeah. up with a strategy for a series and you have to come up with something to go against them right. to counter it and the bottom line is as you just mentioned three and 11 in their last 14 playoff games Th that falls on everybody and yeah. including Mike Sullivan uh, I including think he, Crosby and Malkin yes exactly yeah, everybody yeah. Uh, I think Mike Sullivan's a tremendous coach um, obviously right. Crosby's a Hall of Famer Malkin's a Hall of Famer you know we, you, you know right. you know but playoffs you got to produce and I, I still think the Penguins are gonna win the series so do I however yeah. if they don't you know Oh, it's bad. Those, number, those, un, those numbers are just, there's nothing. You Then you start have to questioning what's going on. Is this just a regular season team and not a playoff team? Why can't we make adjustments in the playoffs? What do these teams, Barry Trotz in particular? It really uh, is him. Yeah, even yeah. going back to the capital days. Yeah. What, what they do, what do they do? And, um, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff, so I, I don't want to get too deep into that because they very well could win these next two games, and then we're talking about them taking on the Bruins or the Capitals. However, right. uh, we'll have a lot more of this discussion, uh, you know, maybe in three or four days, depending on what happens here, because this is a uh, critical time for the careers of, I would say, Malkin and Latang in Pittsburgh. Crosby's never going to go anyplace, as he shouldn't. Right. However, those other two guys – you get bounced out here in a couple of, uh, you know, you get bounced out in the first round. I have a hard time making an argument that uh, those, sh those guys should be around and you shouldn't start somewhat of a mini uh, rebuild without those two and face this thing around Getzel and. Uh, right. And it seems like that's been a conversation after losing series the last couple years, but then a week or two later, it's just, well, they're not going to do it. So that's just the end of it. But people bring it up and then it lasts for a little bit of time and then goes away. Obviously, Malkin would be the piece that would still have value despite him declining. The you could get a lot to down rebuild. Down. The, problem. the problem is they should have done this a couple years ago. It would have been much more a couple years ago. Yeah, right. You're not Absolutely. Gonna get, you're, you're not going to get, even if you trade him now after this season, you're not going to get. You don't think you're going to get a top three round draft pick, a third round pick at least? Oh, well, you're you, you're going to get more than that, but right? No, I mean more at least in that neighborhood, and then more yeah. added on, right? You just think that you're trading. You would have got a, a first round thing, pick two or three years ago. Yeah, you 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 got a lot more, and right now I don't know what the I, I'm not into that. I don't know what the sure uh, the compensation would be, but it's not. Trust me, it's not going to be what Penguin fans think they can get for Evgeny Malkin. No, because his age is going to be a factor. Right. His best years are behind him is going to be a factor. I will say, obviously, there will be a team that maybe is not good, or right. even if they're a fringe playoff team that would need a little bit pump in their scoring. He's always talked about wanting to be in warmer weather. His wife, too. I could say Florida might give up a, a decent amount because they need that one more offensive player that would put him in Florida where his wife's always wanted to be in. Maybe that could happen. But honestly, they're probably not going to do it because they, they've kind of married themselves together to these players, and they've also kind of left it up to what Malkin wanted to do. If he wanted to stay, they weren't going to move him. This might be different now because this would be the first offseason we're going to go into with Brian Burke, with Ron Hextile. They're, they're going to come at this differently. They're not going to worry about any deals that were cut between Malkin and Jim Rutherford. They're going to try to build this team up. I will also say, Mike, that I think is interesting. When they took over this team, it was not a good team and it was in flux and in drama with Jim Rutherford kind of leaving out of nowhere, despite what he accomplished. So I don't know if in the back of their mind in December and January, they thought they would be in the playoffs. At that point, they weren't a playoff team. They might've thought this was going to be a rebuild now and they could make whatever move they wanted to make, but maybe it was kind of fool's gold. They're able to win without Malkin. They get into the playoffs now and yes, they might want to change things and rebuild, but when you're a division champion, it's harder to sell that than if you would have missed the playoffs. I also can't see this series. I can't see them losing this series. But if they would lose this series, it would be worse than losing a couple years ago. It would be worse than last year, even with Montreal being to a 12-seed equivalent. Because this is a division champion, and you, you would figure you'd rather play the Islanders than Boston or than all these other teams, than Tampa, than – and yet they're getting the team they wanted to play and they're struggling with them and going into a deep series. So 
if they would lose this series, the stars would eventually have to be looked on and no, they're never going to move Crosby, but there would have to be some people saying, Hey, Sid, you can't have one goal through six or seven games and everyone point the finger elsewhere. You're the best player. There gotta be more uh, if you're going to avoid these scenarios, but I do think they're going to, I, I honestly do believe they're going to play well in game five tonight. I do think they're going to win this series. I wouldn't be shocked if they win this in six games and they win the next two games. So this could all be for naught. We're going to have at least a few more days of this. And then if they would lose, it would even be crazier, but likely going to the second round. We will see though, as it continues and they've been that roller coaster ride mic'd up here on PSL and PSN, make sure to hit that subscribe button to get a notification whenever we upload one of these shows and everything else we put up here on the channel throughout the family of networks. Now, Mike, separate from the Penguins and separate from the Stanley Cup playoffs and the NBA playoffs and it's kind of postseason feel around these weekends, there's a major golf tournament going on, the major championship, the PGA Championship. I actually was down there in Key Island the last time it was there in 2012 when Roy McIlroy won by 13 strokes. It's a beautiful course, man. Phenomenal. Uh, but Phil Mickelson sets some history, wins it at 50 years old, there hadn't, be, hadn't been somebody that age to even lead a, after 36 holes since 2012. <clears throat> and it's just phenomenal for him to do that. What does that say about his legacy to after all those years of a slump to all of a sudden win that, that one for the thumb in terms of another major to bolster his career? Because like Tiger, he, it looked like he was never going to win another one again for a while. Tiger won the Masters. And then clearly we don't know about the future with him. But Phil gets the major win. He wins another major at 50. And is it good or bad for golf? Oh, it's awesome. It's completely awesome. Uh, 30 years between his first, the biggest stretch in history of the sport, 30 yeah. years between his opening win and now. Um, and, insane. Yeah, it's, that's I, basically I my I life. The best. <laughs> I think it's the best moment in golf history. I think it's better than uh, Jack Nicholson. Um, or Tiger in 97, winning yeah, the Masters I, at that I age. Think it's better just because of 50 years old on the longest golf course, the most competitors as far as being able to be in the field. Yeah. You mentioned the time in between majors. I didn't think Phil would ever win again. No. I did not. I, I, I tweeted this and I, I, I believe, and I, Obviously, I, uh, you know, I'm not one of these guys that tweet something that they don't believe. Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> we are legit here on the show. Like some radio host. But um, um, it was the most, uh, honestly, it was the most enjoyable thing that I think I've ever watched on TV. It was. It was. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was. I, I, had okay. more, I had more fun watching that event over those last couple of days. I, I don't get into the, I watch once in a while if there's a name on a regular right. team or but guys like Phil Mickelson, Tiger, I watch. I watch well, did you stuff. enjoy this more than when Tiger won recently, a couple years ago, and he came back yeah. and won, won a major after not winning for so long and all the drama going around with him? Yeah, and I think one of the reasons why is Phil is more likable than Tiger was. I thought he is. Tiger was a phony. And the other thing was that made it so enjoyable was it, I think it's a sign of how everything in the world is coming back, the, the, the impact that the fans had. Yeah. It was even at the end, they kind of swarmed him a little bit. Yeah, the scene on 18 was something that nobody had ever seen before. Right. The fans ran it from the start. It was just so enjoyable. We take we took that for granted over all over the last forever until COVID started. Yeah. As far as having fans there. And to to see how a, a full golf course, to see how pumped up they were for every shot. And then to have Phil, uh, a guy that you know, as Jim Nance labeled him, the people's champion. He He's is. A, everyone likes yeah, him. Yeah. Everyone loves Phil. And yeah, <laughs> there's just, nothing to hate. Yeah. Just the drama of, you know, our 50 year old. I was thinking about this. I was talking to a buddy this morning. Oh, if you had to bet this, there's no way Phil Mickelson's going to be. Able no, to I, I didn't believe it. Even when he was leading after 36, I exactly. honestly thought he would fade. I did not think yeah, it would exactly. happen. I said, he's going to lose here. And then he uh, bogeys the first hole. It's back to a tie. The back and forth between him and Kepka right. uh, throughout the thing, the drama, and then it, it, at the end, it was it, I, I, honestly it was the most. Uh, I can't think of something that I've enjoyed watching mm -hmm. on, in sports more than that in maybe ever. 
I, I will I will say, and maybe this is just me, I was more of a Tiger guy growing up. I've always been a Tiger fan. So when Tiger won a major after so long and so many critics saying he would never win again, and of course we know the drama and a lot of that was self-inflicted. It also was a lot of injuries and we know what happened recently, which potentially derailed his career yet again. So a lot of this is on Tiger's fault, but I never thought he would win again based on all that going on. For him to win that major and not just be close and build up to that major win, I, I was maybe a little bit more into that by being a Tiger guy, but you got to love this for Phil at 50 years old to do this now also out of nowhere. I think people also forget with Tiger having been always the focus, Phil had been slumping for years. He'd been missing cuts. It was arguably worse than Tiger for about that 10 year period. And for him to do this is really cool for, I think him, his family, for golf, the, for, for to have it be with fans there. I think this also is cooler, Mike, to your point if Phil would have won a major in one of the couple before they cut the cord last year, or if he would have won this major, this PGA, but we didn't have the vac vaccine out and we were still not letting people there, it would have been cool for him and his resume. But I don't think the TV feel and being there would have been as cool if you don't see the fans in the gallery there. Watching golf last year, because they still did it for a while, without a gallery, without any fans. And yeah, there's always the idiot who yells, get in the hole every damn shot. It's never going to get in the hole every shot, of course. But it's just odd to see golf without anyone there. It was eerie. It was always like a horror yeah, movie. It watch wasn't watchable. It was really not on TV, no matter who's there. So having the fans there as part of this, having it be a moment, having it be a historic, having it be more for Phil's resume. Um, my only thing with Phil over the years is I did feel like, and I think you hit the reason why, is that when Tiger and Phil both could not win majors and were slumping, people focused on Tiger. Oh, he needs to be better. He's not going to win again. Does this hurt his legacy? And they basically gave Phil a pass a little bit. I think the reason why is because – Tiger's issues were self-inflicted with him cheating on his wife and then that scandal and the whole thing and then the injuries even. Phil's just this straight up good guy that everybody likes. So I don't think people, and this is natural, I don't think fans and media wanted to pick on Phil because he's just so nice. Like he is not, there's no cobwebs there. He's a family man from the jump. So it's cool that he got this again. The only thing I wanted to ask you, though, and the only reason why I did ask you if it's good or bad for golf, my only devil's advocate thought on it, and yes, it was a cool moment today. Long term, the two biggest major moments in the last five years, would you agree that the biggest moments for golf in major championships in the last five years, Phil today at 50 years old in the PGA, and Tiger Woods winning a major after not winning in a decade a couple years ago. Those are two guys that have been around for 30 years, that are older now, that are 40-plus years old, that are Hall of Famers. But if those are your two big moments, does it not say that golf still has an issue with forming stars and getting people to love the sport and casual fans to watch? What if you don't have Phil and Tiger? Because one day you're not going to have both Phil and Tiger, that could hurt the sport and ratings wise. And, and they, that's a problem, even though they've had others win. Well, I, I think that's a, I think that's a legitimate point that you have. However, I think, I think golf had other moments, you know, the streak that um, Dustin Johnson had. Right. Which sure. kept, there, there's other guys. Yeah. But, Roy McElroy. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, but they're just not, you're talking about. It's Phil a, and Tiger. It's magic and bird. Yeah, exactly. That, that's exactly right. Those two just take it beyond a normal thing. It's the same thing if, uh, you know, the Baltimore Ravens, and trust me, I am not, and I don't want to say this, I am not comparing the, Baltimore, um, the NFL to the PGA. Right. The NFL is the biggest. Uh, sure. However, it's the same thing as if when Tom Brady wins a Super Bowl or Patrick Mahomes now compared to if, the Baltimore Ravens would win a Super Bowl right. or the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, it's, you know, it's a Super Bowl. It's nice, but it's a different <laughs> level when sure. you have somebody like Brady winning a Super Bowl. It just yeah. takes Peyton Manning when he won it. it yeah. It's just, it, it's just a different thing. I will tell you this, the, the rate, I would, whenever the ratings come out today, I would be shocked. Uh, I will bet you a, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you a dinner in uh, okay. years okay. that the ratings for this PGA when they come out later today will be um, record. 
they will be uh, they will shatter. Uh, th they'll they'll be comparable to uh, they'll be comparable to Tiger Woods's win uh, a couple years ago. Because that's, that's what I was going to take. I'll take that. I'll yeah. I'll take that bet for you then. Because yeah. that's to be literal. Tiger Woods won the 2019 Masters right before COVID went crazy. That's his last major. He hadn't won a major prior to that since 2008 in the U.S. Open when he had that back-to-back -back in, in golf's OT, the extra holes with Rock Immediate. So it was that long. It was a slump. It was drama. It was a lot. And people thought he would never win again. He still doesn't have Jack's record. He may never be able to golf again based on his, his issue with his car accident recently. But 2019 Masters, that set a ratings record. That was where everybody was watching. I actually remember I, I was hosting shows on the fan with uh, our, our friend and colleague Doran Dickerson at the time. And Doran made the statement on air that he thought it was like watching his uncle. That's how excited he was. So that was that moment for golf prior to this. And then I, I'll take that bet that whether or yeah, not this, this beats. This will, if, they lo if it loses, and I suspect it'll lose to Tiger just because Tiger is Tiger. He's okay. not Tiger. It's not going to lose by much. A Sunday today, it will draw insane. The, the, ratings, the ratings for yesterday will be uh, insane. They will okay. challenge. And if they lose to Tigers, whatever, they, whatever the rating was for that, it will not be by very much. Okay. Do you want to do the? Are, are, we, are you? Are you going to say it beat that? I don't have the numbers honestly, so I would. Just I, I will say totally if they lose, blind. it's not going to be. You know, give me a point or two. It won't okay. be. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, we'll it won't be it very much if they. It won't okay. be very much if they do lose. Okay. If it's close, then we'll give you the win. If not, yeah. then then I'll we'll take have, it. Uh, <laughs> we'll have beers here. And we might okay. even have them on my uh, the deck that Doug Martin's building on my back. Uh, okay. Uh, the back of my house here so uh we can maybe we'll do a show out uh, i was gonna say we could do a live show yeah, right on show. top of martin lawn services work yeah. that would be perfect we'll have doug here uh, having a beer with us uh on the back deck hopefully uh hopefully it's done soon yeah we'll, we'll, do, we'll do that at some point here in the summer when i get a uh, wedding and all that stuff done but yeah that that that'll that'll be awesome so we'll, we'll we'll see how that goes that's the only other moment and as cool as it was that's my only concern the dustin johnson kepka roy mcelroy for a while that already built a hall of fame resume they have spurts they're 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 successful they're good for sure it looks like they're doing it. Dustin Johnson has a connection to Wayne Gretzky. I mean, that's what you'd want as a TV marketable asset as a star, but they're just not Tiger. They're just not Phil. It's just not Magic Bird. It took a while for the NBA to even get over those two, and that included Michael, jo Michael Jordan needing to be that guy. So uh, that's the only thing that, that can golf form stars that when Tiger and Phil are both 100% done where they're not even golfing in these majors can they garner ratings with people following these other stars and i don't know if these two continuous thing to win is necessarily good but having this moment's really really cool so this might be the last one phil ever wins that could have been the last one tiger ever wins so to have those two moments it's cool we got COVID smashed in the middle there unfortunately but that's really cool and it also was cool that tom brady was tweeting up a storm live tweeting phil winning saying that's my quarterback tom brady is just phenomenal on twitter because they had that that two-on-two -two scramble in the middle of COVID there and he was paired with phil so even when tom brady is not winning championships he is winning twitter when somebody else is winning a championship i don't he's just it's just pristine he's perfect he's PR, everywhere he's PR gold he's pr gold he, he really really is that's my quarterback was just freaking fantastic uh, that'll do it for this monday edition of the show game five penguins isles tonight obviously that's a big deal and really the way history usually goes the winner of that game usually wins the series we will see you throughout the rest of the week here on mic'd up here on pittsburgh sports live and pittsburgh sports now and throughout the network make sure to hit up the sites and we'll see you tomorrow